6.5, the remainder and factor theorems. All right. Example one. Um, we're going to try to use long division to divide the two numbers. And I'm going to be honest with you, this is probably the least uh, favorite method to use. And it's probably the most confusing method because you can solve these problems better another way. But um, just so I can do my justice, maybe some of you actually do enjoy this method. And if you do, then you can use it. So let's try to go over this method first. Basically what it's saying is, use long division to divide these two numbers. And they are really not numbers, they're actually equations. And to sit down and try to divide um, these it can be tedious, it can be time consuming, so let's take a look. Literally, this is what it would look like. Instead of two numbers, it's equations. Okay, so it's this second equation that I'm dividing by the first one. And what I want you to keep in mind here is notice how this is 2x to the 4, 3x cubed. It's supposed to go down in order. And since there is no x squared, notice how I have a 0x squared there. So I want to keep in mind that I added that 0x squared in there. <clears throat> okay. I'm looking at this x squared item first. So let's look at x squared. I'm looking for x squared times something that gives me 2x to the 4th. That's why I have this up here. x squared times something gives me 2x to the 4th. So I'm looking at the first two items. Well, that happens to be 2x squared, right? 2x squared times x squared is 2x to the 4th. So I take this 2x squared and I put it above the x squared column. But what I need to now do is I need to take that 2x squared and multiply it by each one. So 2x squared times x squared is 2x to the fourth. 2x squared times negative 2x is negative 4x cubed. 2x squared times 2 is 4x squared. So put the 4x squared down here. But keep in mind, I need to subtract that whole item. We're in a long division, you subtract. So it's 2x to the 4th minus 2x to the 4th, which is 0. 3x to the 3rd minus a negative, so that's plus. 4x to the 3rd, so that's 7x to the 3rd. And that becomes negative 4x squared, so 0 minus 4x squared is negative 4x squared. And I bring the 5x down. So now, x squared times something it gives me 7x cubed. And what's that? Well, 7x, right? 7x times x squared is 7x cubed. So since 7x is the answer, I put that right above the x column, so 7x. Now I have to take that 7x and multiply it by each item. So 7x times x squared is 7x cubed, so I put that right there. 7x times negative 2x is negative 14x squared, so that goes right here. 7x times 2 is 14x, and that goes right there. Remember, I have to subtract the whole thing. So that gives me 0 in the first one. Negative 4x squared, that becomes a positive 14x squared, so that gives me 10x squared, adding those down. And that becomes a negative 14x, so 5x minus 14x is negative 9x. And I bring down the negative 1. So x squared times what gives me 10x squared? Well just 10, which means a positive 10 goes in there. So 10 times x squared is 10x squared. 10 times negative 2x is negative 20x. 10 times 2 is 20. So when I subtract those, when I subtract those two, I end up getting that crossing out. That becomes a positive 20, so it's negative 9x plus 20x, which is 11x. And that becomes negative, so that's negative 21. So that ends up becoming um, a remainder there. There is no other numbers to bring down, so this is the remainder. So the problem is 2x squared plus 7x plus 10 with a remainder of 11x minus 21. So the remainder theorem then. If f of x is divided by x, minus k, then the remainder is uh, f of x, or f of k. So using that idea and using that philosophy, let's look at synthetic division. Well, synthetic division is like what we learned in 6.2, which was synthetic substitution. Same process, 
same everything. So it really shouldn't take too long, and you already know the concept because I already taught it to you. It actually makes everything a little easier in solving. So we're going to solve now using synthetic division. And you want to use synthetic division when you have a nice easy term like x term like x minus 2. So basically what we do is we look at the coefficients like synthetic substitution. And it goes the whole way down exponent. So my coefficients are 1, 2, negative 6, and negative 9. And x minus 2, I need to solve it. Because whatever I solve for is what x is. That's what I'm plugging in for my answer. x equals 2. So I'm plugging a 2 into the problem. So I bring down my coefficients. That's a 1. That's a 2. That's a negative 6. That's a negative 9. And this 2 is the number that goes out in front. So that we solve this to figure out what the number is that goes out in front. So like synthetic substitution, we bring down the 1. 2 times 1 is 2. I add them together to get 4. 4 times 2 is 8. I add them together to get 2. 2 times 2 is 4. I add them together to get negative 5. So how does this give me my answer? Well, surprisingly enough, it's actually pretty simple. Since we started with x cubed, this actually becomes 1 lower than that. So this means this is 1x squared. And then we go down in order from there. Since this is x cubed, we're starting at x squared. So this is x squared. So it is 1x squared. Then we go down in order. 4x. Then we go down in order. It's a positive 2. And the last number, if it's not a 0 here, the last number is a remainder. So it's negative 5 over whatever you were dividing by, which is x minus 2. So solve again using th synthetic substitution. So to do this first, set that equal to 0. And we find out that that's negative 3. So we know the number that goes on the outside. I double check again to make sure my exponents going down in order. Yes, they are. So now I take the coefficients. It's a 1x cubed, a 2x squared, a negative 6x, and a negative 9. I put what I solve for out in front, which is negative 3. So I drop a 1 down. 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. I add those together to get negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 3 is 3. I am together to get negative 3. Negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. I am together to get 0. Like I said before, that 0, since we end with a 0, that means there is no remainder. So we started with x cubed, so that means this is x squared. So this is 1x squared. This is negative 1x. This is negative 3 plus 0 over x plus 3. Well, 0 divided by anything is 0, so really your answer is x squared minus x minus 3. So when we come back, we will start with the factor theorem and finish up on um, the factor remainder theorem, um, synthetic division, and uh, polynomial division.